For this video, we're going to be learning about the side splitter theorem. You've already learned about 7-1, which is ratios and proportions. And this video is dedicated to the Cholo Squindles. And that, those are actual puppies right there, but this is the real one. I'm, you guys asked for a soccer video, so here you go. And now you know what the actual puppies look like. Aren't they cute? Okay. Your notes today are going to look like this. We're going to be doing some diagrams on the top. You're going to need to split your paper in half. And in the bottom section, set it into four equal quadrants. The left side will be two examples, and the right side will be two tries. And before we get started, make sure you have a marker. So the first thing I'd like you to do is to recall a theorem that we already know about parallel lines. It goes something like this. If you have parallel lines, so go ahead and mark those as parallel. And they are a congruent distance apart. Then what could we say? Well, this is the if part. So if they're parallel and they are a congruent distance apart, then what could we say? We could say that the other transversal is split equally as well. That was something that we had known already. The question, though, is, what happens if the parallel lines aren't a congruent distance away from each other? What relationship do the sides have? So in other words, what I'm asking is, suppose these parallel lines, let's say these were 8 feet apart, suppose this was 8 feet and this was 10 feet, what would that mean for this, these red lines here? What would that mean? What would the relationship be between those two lines? The answer to that question is the side splitter theorem. Now we're going to go ahead and write the theorem and then I'm going to translate it into a diagram to make a little bit more sense. Here's how it goes. If a line is parallel to another line, so if a line is parallel to another line, then the transversals that are intersected, this transversal and this transversal, they are split proportionally. Now once you've copied that down, I want to highlight a few things. Um, they are split proportionally. And what split proportionally? The transversals are. All right, let, let's talk about what that means. The if section is all of this. So it should say if a line is parallel to another line. So here's a line parallel to another line. Then it says that these two transversals are cut proportionally. So what could we deduce? Well, then we can deduce that AE is proportional to ED in the same way that AB is to BC. What I'm really saying is that their ratios are the same. So from the comparison of this measurement to this should be the same as this measurement to that one. Let's see this in effect. For the bottom half of your notes, we're going to be using the side splitter theorem, but I wanted to show you the problems first before we got started. What I'd like you to do is take a moment, pause, go ahead and copy your four examples, two examples that we're going to work on together, and two that I'm going to ask that you try. Um, go ahead and pause, and when you're ready, go ahead and unpause, and I will walk you through example one and example two. For example one, the first thing I need to check is if the side splitter theorem would work here. So is the hypothesis here? And I'll remind you, the hypothesis was if a line is parallel to another line. I can clearly see that a line is parallel to another line here. That means that the transversals are cut proportionally. I'm going to highlight those. I've got my green and I have my blue. These are the two transversals. Now they're cut proportionally by those parallel lines. That means I have two equal ratios or proportion. I could say that 8 over 10 would be one of those ratios and that should be equal to 6 over x. Now, one of the options for solving a proportion is to cross-multiply. So I'm going to go ahead and cross-multiply. When I do that, I get 8x equals 60. 
I divide by 8 on both sides to get x equals 60 over 8. I can simplify that fraction. I'm going to divide by 4. And when I do that, I get x equals 15 over 2. Now, if you're a fan of fractions, you could also say 7.5 or 7.5. All three of these are correct. So here's your first try problem. I'd like you to give this one a go. Of course, the first thing you should have noticed is that there are some parallel lines here. That means that those parallel lines are cutting those transversals proportionally. And again, I'm going to highlight my transversals as green and blue. Go ahead and set up your proportion and solve. And when you're ready, unpause and see how you did. OK, the proportion you should have set up is 4 over 6, that's one side, um, would have that same ratio as 5 over x. Now for this one, one option that you could do is you could have noticed that you could simplify this. Dividing by 2 would give you 2 thirds equals 5 over x. Sometimes it's a useful thing to do if you want to work with smaller numbers. Um, I'm going to go ahead and cross multiply. I get 2x equals 15. I divide by 2 on both sides to get x equals 15 over 2. And that's a pretty similar answer. It's the same one we had before. So that's also the same as 7.5 or 7.5. And, and again, those three answers are all correct. Any of those threes would work. OK, for this second example, again, we're going to check to see if our conditions are met. I have parallel lines. Then automatically, I can say that the transversals, this one and this one, are cut proportionally. So I can go ahead and set up those two ratios and set them equal to each other. That's 9 over 4 is the same as 11 minus x over x. Now setting up the proportion is easy, but this is a little bit more difficult than the proportions we've solved before. I'm going to go ahead and cross multiply. And I want you to take notice that 9x is 9 times x. 4 times this quantity gives me 4 times 11 minus x. A common mistake is to write 44 minus x, thinking that the 4 is only multiplying with the 11. But you have to remember this is multiplying with this whole quantity. That means we'll have to distribute. So when my 4 distributes, I'll get 9x equals 44 minus 4x. If I add 4x to both sides, I get 13x equals 44. I'm going to divide by 13 on both sides to get 44 over 13. I'm going to see if I can simplify that. I actually can't, but I could if I wanted to turn it into a mixed number. Um, 13 goes into 44 three times with a remainder of 5 thirteenths. And both of those would work as answers. You could do a decimal, but it would be irrational. For your last try, Again, we find that there are two parallel lines, so I can use the side splitter theorem. That means that the two transversals are cut proportionally. Go ahead and set up your proportion, and when you finish solving, unpause to see if you got the correct answer. Okay, what you should have written, I'm hoping, is the ratio 8 twelfths and x over x plus 5. Now again, you should be seeing this quantity here where you have two terms. That means that the 8 is going to multiply not just with the x, but also with the 5. When I cross multiply, I get 12x equals 8 times the quantity x plus 5. When I do um, continue with this problem, I have to distribute. So I get 12x equals 8x plus 40. I'm going to subtract 8x from both sides to get 4x equals 40, and divide by 4, getting x equals 10. That's our final answer.